Hey guys, welcome back. As many of you know, the focus of my channel is on creating cheap meals that are made by utilizing basic ingredients and also include many fresh foods. What do I mean by basic ingredients? I'm talking about things like beans, rice, and grains. These are items that give you a lot of bang for your buck. They're inexpensive and most have great nutritional value, so it just makes sense to create meals around these items. There is, however, one item that I've been neglecting on my channel. It's been on my bucket list for a while now, and I'm not sure why I haven't used it yet. Well, I've used it in cornbread and a few other times, but that's about it. Yes, I'm talking about cornmeal. Today, I thought it would be fun to make a nice meal using cornmeal as the base and then explore a few ideas for using this in extreme budget cooking. First, I'll be making a polenta bowl. The polenta will be the base, and then I'll add some other ingredients that I have in my kitchen. So basically, it's going to be like my rice bowls, except I'll be using polenta as my base. I love making bowls because they are, number one, super cheap to make, and number two, you can use anything you have in your kitchen, and also they're beautiful to look at and also nutritious. So let's see how we do making a polenta bowl. Since I've never made this before, I'm going to refer to the package instructions for how much water versus cornmeal to use. And in this case, we're using four cups of water to one cup of cornmeal. I'm also going to be adding an eighth of a teaspoon of baking soda. One of my recipe books from America's Test Kitchen said that adding the baking soda helps to soften the cornmeal endosperm, which cuts down on the cooking time. It's also supposed to help to create a silkier, creamy consistency, and cut down on stirring time. This is gonna make four servings, and it called for one teaspoon of salt, but I just added a half teaspoon, and then I'll see how it is and add more later if I need to. Even though I come from a family of Southerners, for some reason, they never made grits. And I'm just realizing that the package instructions is having us hold back one cup of water. So I'm mixing in the cornmeal into one cup of cold water, and then I guess we're going to kind of temper this into the boiling liquid. So what I'm gathering by these instructions is that lumpy cornmeal can be a problem. And I'm saying grits and I'm saying cornmeal. Those are basically interchangeable. Grits are usually made with a white corn. And I believe the texture is just slightly different. There are a few fun things I want to do with this cornmeal. But first, I just want to make it with salt and then see how it is. One of my viewers said that she eats cornmeal mush quite frequently and she just adds butter and salt and pepper and maybe a little maple syrup to it. So I definitely want to try it that way as well. When I think of the uses for cornmeal, other than cornbread of course, my mind always goes to polenta because it's a dish that I've had so frequently in Italian restaurants. There used to be this restaurant in San Diego that made a cornmeal with a vegetarian ragu that was so good. The polenta had a mascarpone cheese in it, and the ragu was always something different. And it was always served on a board and had some kind of red sauce with it. That was so good. And I used to buy the tube of polenta at the store, and I would serve that along with some marinara and mushrooms and peppers. That was always very tasty and the basis of a great meal, but it's so much cheaper to make your own polenta from scratch. Now that this is well mixed, I'm going to cover and let sit on a low temperature for five minutes. I shut off the heat after five minutes and then just let it sit there for a while while I was taking care of something else. It's now very thick. I think most people would probably prefer a little more salt in this, so the full teaspoon that they recommended. However, since I'll be adding salt to my other bowl ingredients, I think it's best like this. I'm planning to make a savory polenta bowl with this. I'm going to use a fried egg in my bowl and I'm going to cook this yolk over medium and then I want to get the sides of the egg crispy and brown around the edges for a nice chewy texture, which I think will be very nice in the bowl. I look to see what I have in my house that would be good in this bowl and I decided on some kale. I purchased this pre-cut bag of kale from Trader Joe's. I'm trying to make my life a little easier during the holidays, and I must say, it does feel so luxurious to be able to just throw this in the pan. I'm going to saute this with a little olive oil and garlic salt, and I'm being careful 
because I don't want to lose all of the body of this kale. It has a lot of water content in it, and so if I cook it too long, it's going to practically disappear. And remember, our cornmeal only has salt added to it, so we're going to get a lot of flavor in this dish from this garlic salt in the kale. One of my viewers told me about how Walmart is selling these little Melinda sauces for a dollar each. So I picked these up the next time I was there. I thought it would be fun to be able to sample these. I think my viewer said that she had these delivered to her. And I noticed when I went online to see if they still had these, that they have another version that I would like to try also. It's the Thai sweet chili sauce, which I didn't see when I was there, but maybe they were sold out at the time. I'm feeling like a green sauce would be really good on my bowl. This one has green tomatoes, jalapenos, spinach, cilantro, and garlic. The polenta and egg are both very rich, so we need something acidic to help balance it out. I found this multi-grain batard French bread at Trader Joe's. Batard refers to the shape of the bread, which is more of an oval or also referred to as a football shape. And this interested me greatly because of the seeds on the crust. I'm usually a big fan of anything with seeds and this crunchy and chewy buttered toast is gonna give us some much needed texture to this otherwise very soft bowl. This green sauce is kind of hot and spicy and I don't really like my food to be hot. So I'm just gonna garnish this with a small amount and I do think any sauce here would work. This definitely looks like a gourmet meal. It doesn't look like an extreme budget meal, but when you price this out, it really is. Everything seen here, with the exception of the sauce, comes to about $1.20. If you wanted to add one more egg, it would be $1.34. By the way, have you guys noticed, but the price of eggs are rising again. I'm hoping they're not going to get as high as they were before. I feel like we need some more color here. Maybe some roasted carrots would be good. I didn't get the first bite on camera, but I tried just the cornmeal with the kale and it was delicious and full of flavor with the garlic from that kale. Now I wanna try it along with the eggs and toast. This is delicious. I would eat this any night of the week. This is definitely comfort food at its finest, but I feel like we've elevated it with all of our ingredients. And I think you could add anything in here as long as you have your acidity and your bread and maybe a little hot sauce. I think really most vegetables would work here. You could even use the little Taco Bell packets or you could use Tabasco, Louisiana hot sauce, garlic chili, sriracha. Well, you get the point. Usually when I'm making my bowls, I'm using whatever produce is on sale at that time and when I look back at these bowls it's kind of even hard for me to believe that all of those are from an extreme budget video. It's my understanding that white corn is grits and yellow corn is referred to as cornmeal mush. However, I'm wondering if these terms are also somewhat regional. I myself have never made either one of these for breakfast. They've just never been on my radar. I have eaten grits before and love them. I just haven't ever made them. And since one of my viewers likes to eat hers with a little butter and maple syrup, I thought I would try mine that way. This was so good. I would definitely make this again. However, I don't like cooking breakfast in the morning. I could see myself freezing some of this cornmeal mush and then just popping it in the microwave or making up a batch on the weekend and then having it in the fridge. A few months back, I purchased this Dash Mini Waffle Maker. I thought it would be perfect to play around with for meals for myself, and I also thought I could have some fun with this on my channel, so you'll probably see a lot of this in the next few months. Recently, I was at H Mart and noticed they had these bags of scorched rice. They seemed expensive for just being rice, but if you've ever had crispy rice before, then you know it can totally be addicting. I was so intrigued and I was automatically thinking about my channel and how easy it would be to make this at home. And as it turns out, lots of people are using their waffle makers to create some crispy rice treats. I already made one version of this that I released on a short. Basically, that one had the chili crisp and some sesame oil and soy sauce. It was really good. But then I was thinking about how fun it would be to make a Cuban-themed version of this. So for this one, I'm going to season my rice. And I'm out of my favorite vegetable bouillon. So I'm using this better than bouillon. But you could also use chicken if you want. 
or whatever your favorite is. And I'm also going to add some turmeric here. Not only is that good for us, but it's also going to give it a nice vibrant yellow color. And I only added a fourth of a teaspoon, so it's going to be very mild. This is not a very ripe plantain, so it's not going to be very sweet. I decided I wanted to try frying these and also cooking some in my toaster oven. And if you're wondering why I have the different shapes, it's because I wasn't sure what shape I wanted for plating. And I did salt these as soon as they came out. They tasted very similar, but I like the fried ones slightly more. The texture was just a little bit better. This is supposed to be cilantro, but I accidentally grabbed the flat leaf parsley, but that's okay. I'm just going to go with it anyway. It'll still be tasty and add that pop of freshness that I'm looking for. When I made the last one, I cut it in half, but I think that since I have the plantain, it might be easiest just to pick this up and take a bite. This was really tasty. It's like a crispy rice cracker, and in this case, it's perfectly seasoned. This has so much flavor. My only wish was that the plantains would have been a little bit riper because I really did want that extra sweetness. I thought it would make a nice balance, and then I also had some avocado, so I tried adding that to my last bite, and that was really nice too because that creaminess against those black beans, that's, that's always a combination that I love. Anyway, if you want to put all these ingredients in a bowl, you can do that. We're just having some fun with some extreme budget eating. It's always nice to have options. Don't forget to check out my other channel where I'm posting several recipes each week. For now, I'm just posting meals there that I've already made on my channel so that they're easier to find for my viewers. I wish you all a happy New Year's. Thank you so much for your support of my channel. I'm looking forward to us having a great 2024 together. Thanks so much for watching, friends. I'll see you Sunday. Morning has broken. My windows are open. Wanna feel the wind blow through my hair. Which way do I follow? What happens tomorrow? I turn to you and hope you can guide the way. Sometimes